you want to adjust that a little bit? I'd All right, I wanted to um, tag on to what Pastor Bob and has been teaching on lately, and plus our videos on Sundays, um, because of the times we're in, just to make us more aware of it, and to, you know, make us more aware, so we can make sure that other people are aware, <laughs> that we can make sure other people are aware. Because we're in perilous times and we need to be, make sure people are aware of, of what we're living in. If we'll put on the board um, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, you start out. If you want to open up your Bibles or just look at it on the board, we'll get right on into it. 2 Timothy 3, 1. This will be through the Amplified. But understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greed, desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abuses, abusive. Blasphemous scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. You see a lot of that going around? It's scriptural. <laughs> they will be without natural human affection, callous and human, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. You think that Middle East falls into that right now <laughs> they will be slanderers false accusers troublemakers intemperate and loose in morals and conduct there's a big one there going on uncontrolled and fierce haters of good we could stop there and talk about that for three days in a row <laughs> They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. Just to go back up there and, and um, loose in morals and conduct. That's a big issue we're having today in this world. Now, how does that happen? Morals are morals. But man's idea of what is moral has changed. The world's concept of morals and what is good has changed. And they want everyone to fall under that blanket. Everyone. That's the way of the world. For although they hold form, for although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Now that's big, people. Even Christians aren't even aware, and they deny the true power of what God can do, has done, will do, and the power that we have as His creation to do those things. And there's a stern warning about it. Avoid such people. Turn away from them. Now see, then you get the, uh, the left crowd that says, oh, I thought you're supposed to love anyone. It doesn't say don't love them. But turn away from that. Don't be involved in that. For among them are those who worm their way into homes and captivate silly and weak-natured and spiritually dwarfed women loaded down with the burden of their sins and easily swayed and led away by various evil desires and seductive impulses. Now, do you think that's not pertinent in this world today? Look how many women there are in this world. they got children. They're left on their own accord. The man is gone. 
if he ever was around other than one night time. Our women are sitting there ready to be stricken by the enemy. Because the natural leader isn't around. So see how these things can happen? Oh, well, I'm a strong woman. <laughs> Listen, you weren't designed to be the head. That's a tough assignment to be taking on yourself. So that's how this will happen. And so women become weak. So any guy that just comes along, oh, good, there's a man in my life. That's why you see some of these things just over and over and over. Let me step on no one's toes now. But we got to see this thing. Lord, why does this happen this way? Well, he tells us. These weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. They are forever inquiring and getting information, but are never able to arrive at a recognition and knowledge of the truth. Just as Jonas and Jambres were hostile and resisted Moses, so these men also are hostile to and oppose the truth. They have depraved and distorted minds and are reprobate and counterfeit and to be rejected as far as the faith is concerned. But they will not get very far, for their rash folly will become obvious to everybody, as was those of the magicians mentioned. So, you know, we have to be aware of our time. We have to be aware of what's going on. You know, these scriptures are so alive and so pertinent. You don't have to walk around and say, Lord, why does this happen? Well, he tells us why it happens. He tells us how it happens. Then he tells us how to protect ourselves from it. He gives us the full instruction. Now, again, in the last days will be perilous times. So we know that's coming. It's no secret. <laughs> it's, it's not a, a, a sudden surprise. We were forewarned and, and told about it. So let's go into some things about that. We're going go to go on down to 312, Willie. Indeed, all the, indeed, all who delight in piety and are determined to live in a devoted and godly life in Christ Jesus will meet persecution will be made to suffer because of their religious stand. Now, I'm going to tell you, just because you become a Christian, it ain't all roses. There is peace, and it is the way to go. But you better be ready for persecution. You will never escape persecution as a Christian. We see what's going on today. Who is being persecuted the most? Christianity. There's no argument that we have against the world, but the world has an argument against us. <laughs> Religions have an argument against us. Atheists have an ar argument against us. Dictators have an argument against us. The world has an argument with Christianity. And will do everything to snuff it out. So you will not escape persecution. Now don't let that throw you and say, well, maybe I shouldn't be a Christian. <laughs> it's better to be persecuted here on this earth than to live in eternity in hell. Trust me. So just be aware that, you know, I'm going to walk with Christ, but because I'm going to do that, there's going to be some persecution against me. Just stand firm. Just stand firm. Going down 13. But wicked men and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and leading astray others and being deceived and led astray themselves. That's pretty bad. People are going to start deceiving us and then they're going to be deceived themselves. So don't sit around and go, you know, that pastor over there, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of losing it. Listen, people who deceive start getting deceived. When the door opens, when you open the door, you are going to be subject to being deceived. But as for you, continue to hold the things that you have learned 
of which you are convinced, knowing from who you learn them. And now this is powerful. 15, and how from your childhood you have had a knowledge of and been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to instruct you and give you the understanding for salvation, which comes through faith in Christ Jesus, through the learning of the entire human personality on God in Christ Jesus, and absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. And I love that. Ch from childhood. Me and my wife and our family and even the church, this is not bragging on my children, but I'm seeing what my wife puts in my children on a daily basis and that we instruct them, and it comes out of them. It comes out of them. We got Josh, you know, Jacob, uh, one night, I'll tell you the, the story, but he's got a track in his pocket and gives this guy out here a track one night who ran out of gas. He saw an opportunity. He said, I want to give him something, Dad. He said, okay, I got that. I'll write that down. That's good. Joshua just turned four. He's on a trampoline with our neighbors, and one of the little girls gets to pushing and shoving. Joshua's inside the house, runs out the house with the Bible in his hand, so he's out there doing something. <laughs> he comes back in. He says, I want to let her know why you should be nice to your friends. Well, oh, okay, I'll write that one down. He got Kayla, who's two, who's been praying for her dad on a daily basis with his back. And we don't say, hey, do you want to pray for daddy? We just say, my back hurts. I pray for you, daddy. Listen, ain't no trophy they'll ever win. Ain't no degree they'll ever get that will give me more pleasure than what they've given me in their young years already. That's awesome. I don't have, listen, I'm not looking for glory out of what they become as far as their standard on man. That right there, what they're doing now is giving me all the glory that they're actually moving at that young of an age in Christ. And no one's poking them with a stick to make them do it. So that scripture is absolutely true. You teach them from childhood, they'll get it. 16. Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction, for reproof, conviction of sin, for correction of error, and discipline and obedience, and for training in righteousness and holy living and conformity to God's will and thought, purpose, and action. It sounds like we ought to pay a lot of attention to the Scripture. I mean, that's a lot of stuff it does for us. Even the tough stuff. You know, I got a dad sitting back there. By the way, he's not my father-in-law. He's my dad. See, we got to start realizing who we are in Christ. See, when people get married under God's principle... That couple becomes one. So then her mother and father are now my mother and father. My mother and father became her mother and father. Because, see, if we as man keep that divisive unit in there, well, that's just your mom and dad. And that's your mom and dad. There's always a split. Hmm. We can, we can take a minute to settle on that one. But, see, I know God's principle. You know, so when dad corrects me, I don't look at him and go, well, you're really not my dad. <laughs> no, mm, I got it. Thank you. Just as this says, I will, I will correct you. So my earthly father and my heavenly father. Why would I be stupid not to take correction from a man of God who's proven? That would be foolish of me. And it would be disrespectful to God. Because it's his principle. Don't, no one say ouch in here. <laughs> it's just coming where I'm coming from. You know, I told Rachel when we got married, listen now, if your dad would have said, I didn't, listen, I knew he wasn't going to say no, because this thing was settled. When I met my wife, it was an answer to prayer, by the way. I didn't pick her. God sent her to me, because that's what I asked him to do. So I said, Rachel, if your dad would have said no, or I didn't think he would say no, I thought he might say wait a little longer, longer I would have waited. Rachel, 
you wouldn't have married me? No. But now why? Well, I see her parents. They're godly parents. They do the right thing. I'm not coming against them. I would have an unsuccessful marriage. Now, the world's got a lot of views and opinions on that, but see, I don't care about their opinion. I care about this word is what it says. Going all over, See how the scripture can take you in all kind of avenues when you really want to get some meaning and truth out of it? 17, so the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good, every good work. And then we're going down to four, uh, uh, four, one through eight. Four, one. I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by in the light of his coming in his kingdom. Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by and be stand by, be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them, being unflagging and exhaustible in patience and teaching. There's a lot in there, y'all. Now, you know, there's some people that are, that that'll go to school to become a pastor, or just think I think that's what I want to be. But let me tell you something: if that's not your calling, you better back up, <laughs> because there's a lot of responsibility in there. So when this pastor of ours says, "I pray for you," I, he is not saying he's concerned about us and doesn't mean it. He means it because see, he knows his duty. I mean, there's a lot in that. So he has to have patience, understanding. He has to know how to correct. And he's not correcting because he wants you to do it th- his way. He wants you to do it God's way. So it will go well with you. If you listen, if you want it to be well with you, do it God's way. And then listen to the man of God when he has something to tell you. It's not like we're dealing with some guy who's unproven. He's proven. Why wouldn't you listen to him? Just the same as I said about dad. Why wouldn't you listen to him? His assignment's been given. Listen to the pastor. You want me to stay on that one for a minute, Pastor Bob? (laughs) For the time is coming when people will not tolerate. Listen now, here's the reason you want to listen. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure sound and wholesome instruction. Do we see that? But having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying. The flesh is involved. They will gather to themselves one teacher after another to, to a considerable number chosen to wait a second here. yes there I am <laughs> chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold now listen if you don't think there's big social agenda movements going on you better wake up and that scriptures right there show what that is all about you know, these groups get together and they foster their idea. They start believing it. They demand you be tolerable of it and then accept it. They will gather to themselves. And then the momentum builds. And they will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths. In man-made fictions. They'll wander off. <laughs> Gone. What happened to that guy? I thought it was all right. Well, you know, he's kind of started listening. He got involved in these people. He thought their ideas sounded great. 
And then one day he just wandered off. But as for you, be calm and cool and steady. Accept and suffer unflinchingly every hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fully perform all the duties of your ministry. Well, there you go. What can I do about it? Evangelize to people. Spread the gospel. Tell them the good news. Tell them why you can smile while they're frowning. Tell them why in the midst of the storm you're happy. The storm doesn't make you unhappy. The storm's the storm. The storm didn't shake Jesus. The storm isn't the problem. Finances is not your problem. Your neighbor is not your problem. The problem is, where are you? Where are you? Going back to the scripture earlier, be ready in and out of season, basically. Now, I've always told Pastor Bob, well, just whenever you want me to preach, just ask me. But I mean that. I'm ready. I'm not ready because I'm good. I'm just ready. I believe it. I love it. I want to tell people about it. I don't care if it's a bad day or a good day. If you call me to do it, I'm going to do it. My back's hurting right now, but I don't care. In and out of season. Ready to go. Well, I, you know, don't. here's my notes. I don't have any notes. Because God has prepared me to be ready in and out of season. And he's taught me to understand this word. It ain't by my account. I hate studying. I don't like, I never studied. But I've got it. Now, if I was foolish and didn't understand it, I'd be studying more. And I do like to know the word and study the word. That's not boasting and bragging. Not saying, here I am, a vessel prepared. Lord, tell me what you want me to do. My shield's always up and ready. I've always got my sword. I don't pick the days you need me. You tell me when you need me. My job is to be prepared, willing. We all need to be prepared and willing. Verse 6, for I am already about to be sacrificed. My life is about to be poured out as a drink offering. The time of my spirit's release from the body is at hand, and I will soon go free. That's awesome. You know, when Pastor Bob asks who's ready, and I'll, I always raise my hand, I'm ready. I'm ready. How could you say that? You're going to leave your ch my children and wife. I can't take care of them better than God. I'm ready. So when my time's up, I'm ready. I'm, in fact, I'm looking to be, I'm looking. I'm looking. That may sound odd to some. Yeah, I love my family here, but see, I'm looking for the glory. I am ready. My heart is settled. I am ready. Don't make no mistake about it. I am ready. We clear? <laughs> I'm ready. I have fought the good, worthy, honorable, and noble fight. I have finished the race. I have kept firmly held the faith. As to what remains, henceforth there is laid up for me the victor's crown of righteousness, for being right with God and doing right, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me and recompass me that great day, and not only to me, but also to those who have loved and, and yearned for and welcomed his appearing. His return. So why wouldn't you want to be ready for that? Hey, listen, I got this chest and it's everything you need, um, but let me know when you're ready for it. Oh, I'm ready for it. So why not you ready for what he's got for us? Death in God's, death for God to be with God, that's great. That's great. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Or just the rapture, come on, take me out, whatever. Let's go. 
But while I'm here, <laughs> I will do my duties. So we're living in a perilous time. We got the, the world going crazy over everything they can imagine. Strife, threats of war, uh, just a fading away of any moral compass. But we're, we're, it should not be a surprise to us. These scriptures lay it out. Man will start wandering off. So we've got perilous times. But here's the deal. They cannot take your faith unless you give it to them. So you have to have faith today. You have to build your faith up. You have to reckon yourself dead to sin and build yourself up in the faith. You have to be ready for these times. These times, let me tell you something. Pastor Bob hits on it sometime, and I'd love to go into a seven-day course on it. There's some tough times coming. And I don't know how much you understand that, but some of these teaching we're watching, they'll bring some of that out. But it is a rough road coming. The, the, the blessing that this nation has been under for so long is starting to fade away a little bit. Don't be caught off guard by that, see? Remember, it says, I will bless those who bless Israel, and I will curse those who curse Israel. Well, we're in a day and a time when we're starting to tell Israel, and when I say we, we're not talking about us in here. We, we know. But our country, the leadership of our country, has started to say, you know, it maybe isn't that important to always be there for you. Why are these things happening? Well, we just went through some. It's not just the person. See, there's a spiritual thing going on here. The devil is in motion. You know, he's wrenching away. He is wrenching away at our government to try to get us so disheartened and disconcerned with what's going on over there to say, Israel, listen, you're on your own. But see, we know the answer, how that story will end up. So we're not frightened of it, but again, you have to stand guard. You have to say, nope, our support is for Israel. We want to let them know that we're here for them. But see, you have to, you have to say that. You don't have to keep your mouth shut because that's a politically correct thing to do. This has nothing to do with the po politics. This has nothing to do with it. That's a... Uh, You know, I don't know if you realize it, but one day we're all going to be over there. So, <laughs> if you never stop to think, why should I pray for Israel or what's the big deal? One day that's going to be where we are. See, he comes back, he's going to set up his kingdom. We're with him. A lot of people don't think of that. They've never been told that. They've never been, you know, they don't teach that in your normal settings of church or theology or they just don't talk about that. It's not just about heaven and hell. It's where you're going to be and what you're going to be doing with God or without him. It's not just, oh, I just go there or there. There's, there's an eternity, an eternity. And part of that for us is we will be there when he comes back and sets his kingdom up. Again, why would you not want to be ready for that? You mean I get to come back with him and see him do this and be in part and be part? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for that. So we, we have a lot of, of fight going on. Uh, you know, the world today doesn't want to pay attention to the scriptures at all. But you know, we don't have to go into Sodom and Gomorrah to remember, boy, this nation's going to start honoring Marriage between same sex? Ooh, you know, in the scripture, there was a heavy price paid for that. But see, today's modern world wants you to feel free and floaty and everything's okay. You just don't say nothing about it. And guess what? A lot of people start sleeping and don't say nothing about it. And then they enforce, well, you gotta, you, you have to perform these marriages. I've performed about six of them, and I tell you, they'll just have to chop my head off. They've got to tell me I'm going to reform one between a man and a man, or a woman and a woman. 
I know our pastor here feels the same way. This isn't going to happen. Well, Charles, you're intolerant. Yes, I am. I'm intolerant of those, uh, those abominations against God. I'm highly intolerant. I'm inflamed about them. I'm burning inside about them. I hate them. I hate them. So what, are, what do we do? We keep, again, we got to keep honoring our faith. We got to go forward. We got to keep marching on. Well, you know, they got that going on. We're turning against Israel. Listen, do your part. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to spread the gospel. Share the word. Take time for your fellow man and let him know there is a heaven and hell. There's a choice to be made. Listen, there's a choice, but there's only one choice. See, because of sin, we're subject to hell from birth. You don't go around and then choose to go to hell. What you do is you have to choose and accept Jesus Christ to save to be saved from that hell. So see, you're going, you're automatic, you got a one-way ticket to hell from day one. You got to cash that in for a different ticket. If you do not make that choice, you're going there. Why didn't you choose hell? It has nothing to do with it. Because the instruction says the only way to the Father is by Jesus. That's it. You don't have to study it, don't have to you, you Again, you've got to get down to the roots of you either believe it or you don't. I would rather have a room full of people in here to say, I don't believe it, than to say, oh, I believe that, but not this. I don't, well, I'll turn that page. I'll read the next page. I'd rather have them say to me right in my face, they don't believe it. Just like that Billy Graham movie, his friend, he's, he actually defended his atheist friends because he said he had integrity. At least he said what he believed. So if you don't believe, if, and, and I'm not putting condemnation on you, but listen, if you don't accept every word by faith as a truth, you've got to decide if you really believe it. You've got to determine, Lord, either I believe you or I don't. And if you're on the fence, there's plenty of people here to talk to about it. And if you have questions, there's plenty, plenty of people to ask questions to help you with. But don't get stuck on it and never address it. Because we don't judge your heart. He judges your heart. So we can only do our part. Our pastor can only correct us and watch us and love us. He can only do his part. But he can't save us. He can't make it right with God for us. You know, he sent his son here to redeem us, to make us friendly with him. So we're sons and and daughters of God, but we're actually... When you listen, when you get that in your heart and in your spirit, you become his friend. That song we sing, I am a friend of God. See, we put ourselves down here. We think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm his son. I'm, I'm down here. I re- no, listen, I'm your, you're my friend. You're my friend. I need you up here with me. See, I'm God. You're not God, but see, I want you with me. I want you right in my arms, fellowshipping with me. I am a friend of God? That's a concept that a lot of people can't get. They don't get it. They can't put themselves in that, in that position. But you are there. You are there. So we, we again, we see what's going on in our nation. And listen, I love everybody. But again, I'm not going to tolerate those things. If I tolerate those things, I really don't believe him. So I'll call myself a liar at that point. So, but I love people. I don't want them to know my truth. I want them to know the truth. I didn't write the word. God wrote it. You know, you don't play around with marriage and try to define marriage to man's standard. God ordained marriage. God ordained the hierarchy and how he wanted the family set up. Man is messing it up. It burdens me when I see women and men just out, not taking on their responsibility. It 
pains me. I can't stand it. I hate that. I don't hate them, but I hate that action. So we wonder why our nation's in the shapes it is. And, you know, well, listen, if you ain't there to speak up, guess what? Everyone gets their way. And see, that's that new world order. That's that new world movement. Everything good. Everything peaceful. It's peaceful when you don't say nothing. See, they don't want you to say nothing. Everyone can condemn Christianity, but you can't condemn anything. <laughs> the Christian's not supposed to say nothing, but everyone else gets to say everything they want. That's where we're at. If you aren't recognizing that's where we're at, that is where we're at. Let me tell you, there's some things going to come down through the government. He is going to get letters. He's going to get regulations sent to him of what he can say in this assembly. Now, if you don't believe that, talk to me. We'll go over some of the evidence of it. He knows it. He's aware of what's coming down the pipeline. And, and then you're going to be told, listen, you can't really say you're a Christian. And listen, this thing, I'm not just saying like a jester up here making up jokes. These are facts. He will back me on the, he knows that's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We have a, a, a government who won't support Christianity, but they want to support the world. Where's God's hand on that? Where's the blessings of this nation going? We're not under a lot of blessing right now. The more we turn away, the further away we get. So we have to recognize that. Now, but again, you've got to keep doing your part. See, you don't cash in and give up. Because then he looks at the vessel and goes, well, you're not a vessel fit for my kingdom. You're, you're, you won't even do the little things down there. You're, you're concerned about the storm. We get caught up in the storm instead of the message. We've got to be concerned about the message. So, you know, we're in a day and time where the Iranian president is allowed to get on nation, nationwide television and condemn Israel. Say, I want to blow them off the face of the planet. When have you ever heard such nonsense be allowed other than this day and time we're in? If, you, if, if that one statement alone doesn't let you know that the end is coming at a rapid pace, I don't know what else to tell you. That is a president of a foreign country, an enemy of that nation, an enemy of ours, who says we want to kill them. They don't want to blow the land off the face. They want to blow the Jews off the planet. That's right. So get that straight. They, they want that land. They want the Jews annihilated. You are, we are looking at another holocaust coming down the road from Iran and Russia. And they seem to be let. Here, here's a little more rope. So what's he going to say next? Well, listen, not only do I want to do it, I'm going to do it. That's going to be his next statement. So I want you to be prepared. Listen, you're not, whether it's this month, next month, within a year, very soon Israel is going to strike out. They've given enough warnings. They've asked countries, even ours, to give. Let us know where you stand. But no one's answering them, even us. We're not really giving them a concrete answer. We're the last ones left for them. And when we're saying, hmm, can't really answer you, it's coming, son. It's coming. It's com then don't be fearful. See, we have a way out. As a Christian, you know the glory that's coming from it all. But you going to, how much of this we go through, I don't know. But we will see some of these things. We will see it. So that's coming. Israel will strike out sooner than later now. The, the prime minister has made his point loud and clear. We are not waiting on anyone's permission any longer. And just yesterday or today or yesterday, Iran sent some other test missile. Listen, they're not testing their missile to see if they can strike. They're instigating. They're pecking at Israel. 
They want to draw them out. See, they want them to attack because then that's their green flag to fight. So be prepared. That's coming soon. Coming really soon. So, again, that doesn't mean we pack it in and sit around ho-hum. What do we do? You find someone who needs to hear the word, and you give them the word. You do your daily duties. Again, you don't want to become a vessel unfit. You want to stay fit. We have a duty here, and then we'll have duties there. So we have to be prepared and ready. So you, you've got these nations again, Iran speaking out, uh, Palestine, you know, still claiming that that is their land. God's land, they're claiming is theirs. They're shouting God down. So be prepared. There's issues coming up quick there. So we got this tiny little country and all these countries around it amped up, ready, ready to strike. You will not see a friend defend them. The attack will be furious on them. So be prepared to see those things. You know, we're going to have relatives in the military. There's going to be death involved. There's going to be sacrifice involved. There's going to be many issues. So, again, we see... Ooh, a horrible picture coming. But you got to look past that horrible picture in front of your face, and you got to know what's behind that. The coming glory is behind that. That's what we're looking for. We're dealing with this, but we're looking for the coming glory. We're excited about the coming glory. Well, God, aren't you miserable about that? No, it don't take my joy away. Sure, I'm burdened by it. I don't like it. I hate it. I get emotional about it. I get sad, but I'm looking for the glory. No day goes away without my smile on my face. I don't care what turmoil it is. See, because I don't smile, then I'm not letting the joy of the Lord reign in me. It's not about your emotions and your feelings. See, we've got to take ourselves out of the way and say, God, how do you feel about life in general? You're going to smile for him or not? You're going to accept these things and, and, and be prepared and know how to deal with them? Because, listen, it's going to be emotional. Our, our brothers and sisters over there in that little country, they're being humiliated, they're being taunted, they're being disgraced, and they're going to be sought after to be killed further and further. And we're sitting idle as a nation. That's the day we're in. That's why this thing is picking up steam. That's why it's closer than we can imagine. You know, I know, preach, you know preaching over time, it talks about it, but let me tell you, the evidence is stacked up tremendously now. It is stacked up tremendously. And when Israel is on the threat of, we are fixing to do something about you, killing our women and children, trying to distill our nation, it is poised and ready. The battle's coming. So we got to be ready spiritual for that. we got to continue praying for Israel. See, even though you see, we know God's hand is on Israel. He's going to protect and save Israel. But that doesn't mean you don't pray for Israel. He tells you to pray for Israel. Again, he's looking for the vessels that are fit, that are unwavering, that are ready, that are answering the call. So this is kind of a gloomy message of, boy, this is coming down the pipe. Listen, again, you've got to see past the gloom. You've got to see the glory. And I don't, you know, I know Pastor Bob's been on it and we are teaching, but I'm, t I'm telling you as another man of God, this thing is coming quick. I've, st I've studied this and, and just had an internal discernment about this for years. And I've been watching this thing. It just boggles my mind how clear it is to me, but a lot of the world doesn't see anything of it. It's just smoke and mirrors to them. They, they have no clue and thought process of it. And when our, when our government wants to get so far away from God, 
they don't even see it anymore. They, 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 they have no clue anymore. They don't even stop to go, you know, really, if we went back to the scripture, we could really see how this thing plays out. And we could really see our part in this. That we as a government, as the leaders, should be praying for Israel. But the, the fog is in front of them. The fog is in many of our citizens. The fog is in front of those nations. Deceived by the devil. Hate God's people and God's nation. They want to, they want to destroy them. So we don't, we don't, again, we don't fall to pieces. We don't run away. We accept it. We know it's coming. We prepare ourselves. You know, it's kind of, it's like when everyone saw those planes fly in our buildings, that gut feeling you had, that's what I know that, that, that's the gut feeling I'm starting to get about the attack coming. See, because there's no, you know, <laughs> when God specifically tells you to pray for a specific nation, you better have some love toward that nation. You better have some feeling and some connection that, oh, Lord, I don't, yeah, oh, I'll feel the pain when they feel the pain. We need to be that in tune with it. And see, the world, again, doesn't want to hear a message like this, or they won't even say, that's nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense. It's in here. That's where you go ahead. Whether you're a Christian or not. <laughs> you know, you don't decide what you believe in. You either believe it or you don't. So I hope I wasn't over anyone's head as far as some of that or didn't bring gloom and doom. But I just wanted to tag on, you know, you hear it from uh, Stanley, you hear it from our pastor, you now you're hearing it from me, who I'm not a pastor, but I've studied in this. I've, this, thing is, this thing is more real to me and more open to me, and I've never sought it out to say, God, show me. That. It just started settling in my spirit to know what's going on. Because see, it, my family, my family has a history of worrying. And I've learned how to conquer worrying. But part of conquering worrying is to know the truth about what's coming around. To know what you're going to face. The persecution. Persecute me. <laughs> you know? You want to shoot me for preaching? Shoot me for preaching. You want to, you know, stab me for giving a Bible away? Give it, you know, stab me. Do whatever you're going to do. But you're not going to stop me from doing those things. And you're not going to stop me from loving and praying for Israel. You're not going to stop me from saying that every single word is true. It is, I don't, might not understand it all, but it's true. I don't run away or flip the page because I don't want to believe it. It's true. Well, that's really on my life. I don't want to get into that now. It's true. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're at. It's true. So the best thing to do about that is to get where you need to be. So the truth line, see, when the truth lines up more and more with your life, the peace settles in. Condemnation goes away. Guilt and shame goes away. Love and peace settles in. Joy settles in. But we have a lot of stuff coming our way, so I want us to be prepared and diligent and be settled that God, no matter how it goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share your word. I'm going to pray for Israel, and I'm going to teach people why they should pray for Israel. we got a nation that don't even know anything about that scripture. And Lord, I know the, I know the fight's imminent, but I'm still going to pray and stand against the fight. See, you still pray and stand against the things you should you're supposed to. Because see, if you don't do that, you're disobeying God. He tells you to do that. Stand, stand firm, pray, be diligent. So, again, I'm, I'm looking beyond it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, listen, I'm looking for the day when everything is right. We're going to have perfected bodies. There ain't going to be no strife, no tears. It's complete love. And worshiping our Lord, that's the result I'm looking for. These minor, see, the, even though these are, these are catastrophic, but compared to God's love, eternal love, they're minor. They're minor. 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 
The biggest sacrifice of all was the shedding of Jesus' blood. Everything else to that, compared to that is minor. It's minor. Our sacrifices are nothing compared to that. They're minor. You know, we get mad if we can't make it to the football game because we had to do an errand. Minor. We make a mountain out of it. And here, God, Lord's on a cross dying for us. And we get offended over small things. Offended over small things. And here he shed every ounce of blood for us that he could. Was scourged. Didn't just shed blood, took a beating. The beating of all beatings. The humiliation of all humiliations. For what reason? So if we chose to, we could become friendly with God again. Remember, just because he did it, it's still not your ticket. You have to confess your sin, repent, and you have to make the confession, I believe you lived and breathed on this earth as a man, and that you died and you rose again, and you did it for me. And when you get that burned down into your soul and in your being, you have the victory. Every other thing is minor compared to that. The way you look, the way you feel, the friends you have, the cars you... Minor. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. Because again, all those things don't go with us. Your spirit is either going to heaven or hell. And it ain't taking your Cadillac or your $100 bills with you. And ain't nothing going to save you when you're in hell. That's it. So be clear. Be free in your spirit and your heart. Lord, am I where I need to be? Am I doubting you at all? Lord, I want to, even though I'm wrong in areas, I, you are right. And I am wrong in that area. It's a choice. So again, just if you have any questions and concerns in the next two, three weeks, whatever, ask Pastor Bob or me, because this thing is serious. This, is, this thing, I'm telling you, it's on rapid succession now. I, I Almost anymore, when I go to sleep at night, I wonder, <laughs> will tomorrow come? I'm looking forward and I'm praying for tomorrow, but I'm also, that rapture's coming. Because we see the things unfolding. And again, don't stop doing what you're supposed to do. In fact, do more. We need you to do more. Christians need, Christianity needs you to do more in this time, not less. The social agendas and the leftist movement, they all got the bullhorns, but let me tell you something. What they don't have is the spirit. The spirit speaks volumes without ever saying a word. I learned more from watching my dad work on cars than he could ever tell me. I've learned more from Christ by just listening to the Spirit than I've ever read. You learn, and then when you learn, you do. There's no least use in learning if you don't do anything. So hopefully this makes it a little clearer or a little more, just to get you aware of what we're facing and our, our, our God... <laughs> sovereign nation over there that we're supposed to be praying for we need to know what they're facing listen they are facing annihilation every day we over here have it made every day is tense for them we don't have to worry about our children out here running around whether a missile is going to hit them they do if we can't pray for that we need to do some soul searching and realize well lord what is worth praying if i can't even pray for that so just accept these things, know what they're, what they're doing, but be ready and diligent to do what we're supposed to do. And just thank God that he has purposed our life for something and that we're going to do it and that by our acceptance of his son, the glory is coming. The glory is coming. The glory is coming. All right. Thank you. Amen.